getting ready to race. Glorieta Bay, Coronado, Sabbath Luffin. Low pressure events. Really important for kids to get out and do low pressure events. Not all the top talent at Luffins, usually. Really good time to practice. Work on your objectives. That's our goal for this A. This is A, B fleet, and C1 all together. Three different fleets all together. And we like to race them together because then we can get, you know, you can incentivize a kid. A C1 who beats a bunch of A fleeters is totally stoked. Here they go. That was a, after a general recall. Southwest wind, south wind should be south, left side course favored, Fenton and Celeste. 10347, 10286, both starting down there. Left side should be a little better. Race one of the Luffin, we'll do five races in Luffins. Bella Case on here in her new boat, Veg Head, the purple boat. V. Preston Miller sailed that boat to the top of the eighth fleet. So um, the key to this start, what we just learned, is you got to start anywhere that's clean. You don't have to worry about where you start. You just got to get off the line clean. Look at all of our C1 out on the left corner. There you go, Cam and Isabella just sailing away on starboard. Before the mark, when we went head to wind, our bow was to the right of the mark. So there's the mark there, the, the little uh, orange one there, little hippity hop. And when we went head to wind, our bow was pointed way over here more. And so that meant starboard tack was closer to the mark. There we go. This is the C2 fleet coming up. Really good practice. Fenton lost on the left a little and ended up, you know, a minute after the start, the boat end was fading. And Fenton saw that. He just went out to the right and he's just right on the wind there. He's on a lift, so he's just going full speed right now. And he's made a gain. He's right behind Cam now. Now the question is, does he go back right again? I think it looks windier on the left. You always got to watch inside here, just hard left at the end. So anyway, pretty great racing here. This is going to be three to six knots. Super hard Naples Sabbath sailing. This boat is, this is what makes you good because you got to have all the qualities of a great racer to be good in these little, in these little tubs. The A fleeters. Um, Looks like the left did not work for Fenton. Looks like the other boats gained back out on him a little bit. Okay, so challenging. Yeah, you just gotta sail what you got. Start in a clear area and sail what you got. If you got a lift on starboard, take it. If you got a lift on port, take it. If you don't know, you're just trying to sail towards wind. There's Madeline, 9454, C2 fleet. Sophia, 8900. There's Finn. This fleet is struggling with windward lured rule. So these kids, most of these kids are just out of the uh, learn to race fleet. So that's not what we teach. We teach high and slow, but the good news is, is the kids are going full speed. That's for sure. Every kid is up to speed. Elizabeth, 8799, great start. Oh, look at Scotty McKay. 9690, look at that. Robbie Haynes' grandson, 9690. L, Ellison, 9461, nice job. Perfect, look at that. Lured chine in the water, lee board's good. Main sheet's not too tight. Starboard tack's lifted. Just, just stay on it. Interesting that everybody's jiving, so that could indicate a starboard tack lift for upwind. So L is looking like she is in a good spot. A, B, and C1 fleet coming downwind in race one. Cam Schnorr, fourth at Sabbath Nationals this year. And you got Isabella in her new boat, Veg Head. That purple boat is sweet. A, re, a rebuilt uh, Surefab Corsair. So it was stripped and repainted. And then here we go. Just like we talked about this morning, healing to windward. Get the center of the sail over the center of the boat. That 
that balances the helm, that balances your rudder. So if you sail flat, the boat's gonna head up all the time. You're gonna be fighting the rudder. If you heal the windward, you can balance out the helm and make the boat steer more straight without, and you're just guiding it instead of steering it. It's kind of steering, sailing itself, we're kind of rudderless. Very good. Everybody's vangs look pretty good. No tighter on that one. The vang, the, see the leech bouncing? So that means it's probably pretty good. The leech should bounce just a little bit like that. You see how it bounces like that? Just a little bit. Coming up on one minute for the learn to race weight, C3. C2s, looks like Clara Stewart's worked into first place. Eight, nine, five, nine. And L looks like she's in the top three. A, Bs, and C1s, race one here. Current is going with us on this run. So that run's gonna go quick. Here's the learn to race fleet. Looks like Cody 9354 had the best start. Cody's doing a wheelie. Number one rule of Sabbaths is you gotta have the bow down in the water. There's Evelyn from Mission Bay Yacht Club, did the clinic last week. I think she came out firing on all cylinders right there. That was perfect. Don't heal too much. Good job, Cody, here. But yeah, you need to sit forward in a Sabbath. Number one rule, don't get the outhaul loot too loose and don't sit too far back. Oh, he already did move forward. So 934, good. Hudson, 8946 down there, really good. And uh, here we go. Good job. Cam went in the first race. Here comes Fenton, gonna get third here. Just sailing, you know, sailing calmly. There's Vesper there, doing a good job. Here comes Isabella. Okay, so now you look at the finish line and you decide, I think I would start at the pin looking at his angle. So you wanna try to finish at this point. If it was a starting line, I would, I would start at that end. So then if you wanna finish, you finish at this end. So he should, he'll probably tack right when he gets to the play line. Let's see what he does. Gotta know which end to finish at. You almost always finish at an end. There is Clara Stewart winning the C2s. No, it looks like those guys are just gonna finish. And they're second in C2. <laughs> so she's just, that is unbelievable how fast she is. So this is the C2s. And uh, here's Madeline in fourth. Uh, L and Seconds. We got everybody hooked up here getting advice. The advice is, is that this is more like a westerly than a south wind. You gotta, every race is different. You gotta look out of the boat, you gotta figure out what tacks lifted or headed. This is Reagan in second, Hudson in third, Winston in fourth. Maybe all of them could be there. And uh, my god, what happened to the back of the C3 fleet? My goodness gracious. Coming up on race two, A, B's, and C1's together. You know, for a C1 or a B, sometimes they get a little discouraged because they say, oh, I got eighth place in the race. But you got to remember that the A's and the B's are more experienced. They have more skill at this point. If everybody stunk out here and you placed in third in that race, you'd feel good about yourself. It makes no sense. You wouldn't have sailed any better. So anybody who's feeling discouraged because an A or B from their beating them, they really shouldn't. And our goal is always to get a top three. Top threes average out all of our bad races. Any bad races we have, if we can get a third, second, or a first, it averages out. A seven one is eight points, just like two fours. An 11 one is 12, just like two sixes. Here we go. Benton moving up the line, I think, this time a little bit. Yeah, he didn't like the big righty off the line last time. So it's probably 10301 or 8577 that just got called. So Fenton did a better job this time. He just started up the line, 10347. He didn't like that being to the left and not being able to cross. So he moved up the line. There's plenty of wind here. So he's just gonna keep on going. Yep, now he's gonna cover. Go this way a little. He might end up third. But Oh, good job, Theo. 1022. A beef leader is in first right now. Theo has had four times he's been second place in a two day regatta in beef. First place moves up to A, and he's been, he's been second. 
four times. Yeah, Theo's doing a good job. He's lifted, he doesn't want to attack. Let Fenton go over here. Fenton's gonna just go out over here and go back. He's gonna let Vesper go. Vesper had a nice recovery here, Red Book. Yeah, Theo probably should have just gone a little further. Uh, he's winning easy though. 1022. We have spent most of our time on starboard tack uh, in this leg. And uh, Theo went left first and then he went all the way right and I think it's going to work out okay. We usually don't zigzag the course like that. He overstood the mark. Fenton is going to come around first at 10347 because he stayed within the ley lines. But um, so what that tells us is downwind, we're going to be on port tack a lot. We should be coming around and jiving. We've got less than a minute to go, I think, for the C2 fleet. Beautiful day. Three to six knots. Current is going downwind. So that makes the upwind leg longer. That means you've got to have better VMG speed. When, the, when you're going against adverse current upwind, you gotta have better VMG speed. One minute to go for race two. Because those who pinch or reach, they're losing because the leg is longer. And then downwind, the leg is gonna be shorter because the current's pushing you down there. You're gonna get there quicker. So you have less chance of losing downwind. And so you also just point more at the mark. You pretty much just point straight at the mark downwind. <laughs> Here we go, 89591, the last race in C2 by a country mile. She already has one one day move up day, so if she wins today, she would move up. Here's Madeline, a little too close to the line, 9454, there's Zeke, 8378. There is Finn again, I gotta talk to Finn. Can't be a windward boat reaching down the line. Scotty McKay, 9690, good start. Hudson, 8910, no, that's Madeline, 8910, just moved, this is her first C, 8910, this is her first C2 regatta. 9433 is uh, Caroline. Caroline's a member of Coronado and San Diego, kind of both teams. Yeah, Madeline sit forward. Look at Scotty just gone. Scotty's trimmed super tight. Okay. Here we go, C3 fleet here. Let's look at setup. He looks good, he needs a little bang. Tiny bit of bang. Uh, if your boom rises way up, you can't accelerate well. Here's Winston, he won the last race with his bow line tied as his main sheet. I've never had that happen before. He won the race and his he had his 10 foot bow line <laughs> rigged as his main sheet and his main sheet rigged as his bow line here we go cody right here looks good bang on a little if you don't have any bang on at all in the pre-start your acceleration will suffer when your boom rises up you lose a little power but anyway here we go fenton first uh theo second and c1 clara hannum third nice Nice. C2 fleet. Looks like Madeline 8910 on the hard left is in second. 9690 is winning. Everybody's charging on Port Tack here. Uh, we're coming up on 10 seconds for the C3s. The C3s are not good at holding position yet. So like, for instance, boat number 11 there at 20 seconds should have been going slower. Oh, um, Winston, 115, won the last race with a foul line tied as his main sheet. And he was one inch off the starting line in that start. This is maybe his fourth or fifth regatta of his life, and he's got total command of what he wants to do. You can't see him. Oh, there's Hudson, 8946, really good. Wow, Mission Bay, nice job here. So yeah, the you have to start up the line. 
That's the thing we're learning, like Fenton did in the A fleet. There you go, Cody looking good, going into more wind. It looks like a righty coming, so he should be okay. Oh, Madeline winning a, in her first regatta, winning a C2 race. There's Clara Stewart in second, winning by a long way. Okay, see how her main she's drooping like that? That means her bangs too tight. As soon as you, that's the uh, foreign language right there for ease your bang. When you see the main sheet drooping at the back of the boat, see how hers is straight? So that's all right, but Madeline's winning C2. Clara won the first race by a mile. She's in second in there. We got Scotty, we got his, uh, Caroline. Yeah, here comes Finn. C2 fleet, Clara Stewart took the lead. They still have a whole nother lap to go. Now the thing I learned about the A's and the C1's is that now the A's, B's, and C1's and C3's are mixed up with each other. So course uh, fleet management is really huge in a Naples Sabbath. You gotta be able to get around the other fleets on the same course. And so especially at Sabbath Nationals, if that becomes a problem, at big regattas, that can come, become a problem. So here's Hudson winning the C3 race by a mile. These guys got it. We talked about easing the bang at the weather mark. At the weather mark, we ease the main sheet for the C3s and C2s. We ease the main sheet and the boom bang only at the weather mark. We don't worry about, and Cunningham, but don't worry about the out hole. Just get the bang looser. You can always pull it back on. There's Reagan, 9369, needs to get her main out in fourth. And Winston in fifth. And Fenton coming around in first in the A fleet. So again, management of the other fleet is a big challenge. Vesper coming around and, oh, Theo had taken the lead, dude. 1022 had taken the lead in the A3C1 race. This is great. Finish line coming in here. You can see the perfect tiny bit of lured heel that's too much it's okay this is it right there you see how the it's just the tiniest bit of lured heel and that's it one little degree so the there you go you gotta watch if you're a c2 c3 watch the bows going through the water how much speed they've got good job by theo you're getting a third that's we're getting a second cam getting a third theo fourth Race three, Benton started up at this boat end. It's more favored, the wind has gone slightly to the right. You should have, you could see that on the flag actually, on the orange flag. The pin end is about four, three boat lengths too far down, two boat lengths, two and a half. There we go. Uh, nice start by 9405, I'm not sure who that is. We got Cam 7630, Fenton 10347. It was a big lift off the line, and then we're feeding into a little header. Okay, it's a real day, yeah. Cam and Fenton playing the shift. There's a bunch of wind right here. That shiny spot is more wind, so these guys are gonna come out here. Ben, ben and Cam playing that little shift. Yeah, and then Fenton got another header. He wants to, oh, now he sees Cam getting lifted, so now he's going to hang. This is such good racing, you guys. This is how you get good. Oh, Cam bit on it. So these are regular oscillations. Fenton now lifted again. So Fenton took the lead here. So remember who was winning here. 9405 was winning. Oh, he's still winning by a little. So Benton gained just by playing the shifts. Oh, he let him cross. That was a good call. You're almost, you're not laying the mark by any matter, but your starboard is way closer to the mark. Yeah, this is just such good racing. These guys are gonna, oh, look at this. Benton should look under his boom and see these guys on a nice port tack angle. And they should, yep, there he goes. He knows he's in good shape. 30 seconds for C2. It's a righty. So you would want to definitely start up the line. 
There's Zeke, 8378, could slow down a little. Here comes Madeline doing a pork tack approach, 945 forward last second. Oh, she's gonna not make it. She should have stopped for a second. Over. Wow, a general recall in the C2 fleet. Cool. What happens is in race two, all the coaches start telling the kids, why are you late for the start? You're not starting good enough. <laughs> they get ridden by their coaches. So by about race three, <laughs> you see every kid on the line. C2 start. Yeah, everybody pushing the starts hard here. C2 fleet. What you want to do on the upwinds here is anytime you feel slow, you want to look up at your sail. Like right now, Zeke could just look at his telltales and they're telling him to ease out a little. There we go. Sit in. Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Anytime you feel slow, look up at the front of the sail. It's talking to you. It's telling, oh, look at him. See, he's doing it. The good thing is he's got a nice puff coming right at him. Clara Stewart is just gone. She's just got the, she's getting the puff first. Damn, he went over to the Stingray point side and he tacked. He's winning the eighth lead. And he's gonna cross all of these guys, I think, in the seat too. <laughs> He's got a massive righty, massive puff. Like the biggest puff of the day. Minute and a half for the learn to race fleet here. So my biggest comment about the learn to race fleet and even the C2s, you guys gotta learn how to hold position better in the last 30 seconds, last minute. You gotta learn how to slow the boat down and hold position. You're, you're, but you know, the benefit is that a lot of you are coming off the line with a lot of speed because you're just going full speed. And I can't say your timing is that bad. So. Somewhere in the middle. Just slow down at 30. Here comes Oliver here. Looking pretty good. Looking really good. Light air boat, big fat sail. That's a full sail, look at that thing. I mean, you can see the difference between these two sails of fullness just from the leeward side of them. Over trimmed on here, look at the stalled leech. So we gotta work on that. That's a hooked leech, not good. Here comes the uh, C3 fleet. There's there's Hudson trying to slow down. 8946 zigzagging. That works. That was masterful. Wow. He got rolled by 9055 or, you know, no, it didn't. Winston, 115, another good start. Cody, 9354, better start. Clara Stewart, I mean, Clara Sweet, 8315. So what we're working on, folks, is let the boat climb upwind towards the mark. And then when you feel the boat slowing down a little or you notice the front of the sail luffing, then you just dab the tiller towards you just a little. Let it, the boat wants to go up, so let it climb. And then tiller towards you, back towards you. As we get better, we can just steer more straight. But at this level, you gotta make sure you're on the wind. You can't be reaching at all. And you can't be too high. So if you jab the tiller back towards you a little bit, oh, she just killed it. We worked with 9315, 8315 between the race and look at her, she's having her best race here. Just a really good learner. Two fleet coming downwind. We got to get our sails right, everybody. You see the leader? Her sail is at 90 or 89 or 88 degrees and then everybody behind them is not gotta get the booms to 90. The C2, C3s consistently aren't being able to incorporate what they're being taught. You've got to get your boom at 90. And you gotta heel to windward. Yeah. So you can see the water movement on this buoy. See the rebound buoy, the rebound rings? So the water is moving slowly, but it's still moving enough to affect the race. It affects the starting line. It affects the length of the upland leg. It adds 30 seconds to the upland leg. And 
it reduces the downwind leg by a little bit. So there we go. Yeah, look at that. It's sitting way forward. He's actually holding his boom, so the wind has gone light. But you can see the difference. We gotta get our, gotta get that. Look at that sail. Way too tight. Got to get these sails out. It is a little bit of a righty. The wind is coming from over there a little, but still, his sail's not luffing. There she goes. Bang looser downwind. It's four A through C ones. The wind has gotten very light. Oh my goodness, Cam Schnorr is just on fire. He likes this dicey conditions where he has to look around and play the shifts. Nice tack, Oliver. Don't head back up like that at the end of the tack, though. Tiller in the middle. Tiller in the middle at the end of tacks. Yeah, you got to come out the tack, and the tiller is very close to the middle. Here goes Lorelai. I told her I wanted to go. I saw Cam on the right this last race. She's had some not great races. This is her first B fleet race. She's over trimmed. So there we go. And then she's, I told her to get way to the right here just to take a chance. Just try to get away from everybody else. And you can see the leech telltale stalled out entirely at the top, so she's got to ease it in. The main sheet's looser, and you can see the lured telltale flickering around now. Oh, there it just stalling. We talked this morning about the leading edge gets too flat when you over trim the main, so she should be noticing that the front of her sail is getting too flat when she's trimming like this. There we go. Theo having a better race. It was really tough to see looking upwind into the sun. Okay. Coming up on the C2 start, race four. Have to go for the C2s. Madeline 9454 has had a problem accelerating too much too early. So she did a good adjustment here. She put herself further away from the pin and then she's luffing her sail just a little bit. Yep, look at that, see? I talked to her about luffing the sail when she's early. And this time she nailed it. Nice, super good adjustment. Look at this, Madeline 8910. Had a rough race last time, and the real reason is is because she, again, they're sitting too far back, and they're uh, getting their main sheets too tight, and just not able to sail when it gets really light. Like right now, she has wind, and everybody feels great. Good job by Finn. Good job by Clara, sitting too far back. So the key to today was starting up the line. You'll see that the boats on the left just don't come out okay. And it's just, some, there's something about, just there's this little streak here that you come shooting off the line, you're lifted, 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 and then you start to get headed right in this area. So there we go. Everybody should be taking note of that. Cam is winning again. Uh, Celeste coming around in second. Theo coming around in third. Oh, Oliver Stanford coming around in fourth. This is so good. I love the A through C1 thing. It gives everybody a chance to shine. Okay, C3s. Sorry. On there, we worked with Chloe on letting the boat climb up. She's having a little problem with being too comfortable in the boat. She's leaning back against the windward rail. But we were working with her on, uh, whoa, that's a huge shift. 7635, we are working on uh, letting the boat climb towards the mark and then tiller back towards you a little when it locked. And uh, again, it's working. Okay, C3 is about to start race four. Looks like Reagan 9369 is in a good spot. Looks like Winston, 115, has come out in bad air, kind of nice and calm little tack. Good, Clara Sweet, 8315, nice job. There we go. Turned out that Reagan, 9369, again, getting too far down the line is not seemed to be working today. That's the Learn to Race Fleet headed off. Here's the, oh boy, these guys have a monster. These are the A fleet and the rest. This is great to see Oliver right in there in second. A C1. Nice, that's great news. Three pack, 
You can just see the difference between C3s and everybody else. Their sails are all over the place, hanging, body positions all over. But Chloe Shu here. This is her best race. Again, we win in between in between races, you practice and you get a coach. You go ask the coach, hey, can you watch me? I'm gonna go up win and help me get going here. And a lot of times this is a matter of simplifying. And simplify meaning head up towards the windward mark. You have to have a nose for the goal. So the bow goes up towards the windward mark. Then the sail starts luffing. You go back the other way and you accelerate. And then you try to go up. You can't just steer dead straight all the time. And then you also, we got to get the boom in the right place. Struggling with getting our boom in the right place up there. Here we go. Incredible improvement. Last race, Coronado Yacht Club Luff and A, B, and C1 fleet. The end of the day, the wind has gone back left. We got Vesper, told her to just get a clean start. And then we've got her with her Traveler an inch looser, maybe a half inch looser, less Cunningham, a little less main sheet, um, sitting forward, making sure she is right against that thwart all the time. And we also moved her leeboard forward a half inch. And not that those things are making a difference now, but um, you know, you've know you gotta make these little changes. A lot of little changes. So again, we went less Cunningham. We went, left the outhaul. We pushed the leeboard forward a half an inch. We let the traveler off half an inch to hopefully reduce the um, pressure on the leeboard. Easing the traveler reduces side force on the leeboard. And sometimes if people pull their traveler too tight on a Sabbath, it creates so much side force, the leeboard's just in a stalled state all the time. It's a great boat because it's very adjustable. She is just gone. That's the biggest puff we've had on the left all day. These guys don't have it. Look at these guys. She should be footing right now. See how high she is? She should be one degree below close hall, ripping as fast as she can to get to any sort of riding. If it goes left, she wins. If it goes right, she's got to get towards the right the best she can. I mean, you can't do too much in these slow picks. But again, pressing towards headers. We're right at peak tide. Look at the pin end. You're going to see me that I'm moving from right to left here. Look at the pole. I'm going to be lined up with that palm tree pretty soon on the pin. So it's not moving a lot, but in a Naples Sabbath, see that palm tree? Then we're going to be on the next thing in a second. So we're talking 0.1 knots, 0.2 or something. You might not think that affects them, but this affects the acceleration. It affects the amount of wind we have. If it was 0.5 knots, half a knot, it would reduce the wind by half a knot. So you can see I'm moving. Again, I, in that one minute, I moved two boat lengths. So it's going to take them four and a half minutes to get to the weather mark, so it's making the weather leg eight boat lengths longer at least, which is another 25, 30 seconds. So you got to factor all that stuff in. Man, Theo's having a day. One, zero, zero, two, two. So we've got Cam and Vesper going to come around one, two by quite a long way. Cam has just had a day. He just loves this shifty, finding the pressure. He's going to be so good in 420s being able to find pressure. Here's Madeline, same spot, luffing. They're learn she's learning how to hold position now. Oh, Elizabeth. Yeah, I told Elizabeth just to be super aggressive. 8779. Our big goal for this fleet is everybody sit forward more. Look at Elizabeth. Yeah, nice. First place start for Elizabeth right there. Madeline's going to squeak around the pin end. This is the C2 fleet. Here's Finn going a little too high. Got to get your head looking up at that sail. Cannot luff that much. Number one rule of Savitz, don't luff the sail. Oh, Clara Stewart, 8959. Look at that. That boat's just like an airplane. Look at that thing going away. Red boat has less bang. Benton has more bang with his boom in slightly. He's very fast downwind, so it's really hard to critique him. He just seems to go fast downwind always. He rounded a pretty good third, and he's already in second. Um, but I think her bang, I like her bang better than that. That bang's too tight. Uh, that main sheet 
it's too tight, I can't tell on the bang. This, this sail is set up for upwind, so that bang's too tight, Cunningham's too tight, and we could go ahead and do the alcohol. I'm very cautious about having kids ease the alcohol that much. Because, oh, she just let the bang off. Um, the reason why you don't like letting the alcohol off that much is because you can get it wrong for your upwind setting. <laughs> if you get it wrong for upwind, you can pay. It can be 10 boat lengths. It's really hard to lose 10 boat lengths in a Sabbath downwind. It's really easy to lose 10 boat lengths upwind. This will be the last video. Coronado Yacht Club Luff in December 2023. Really good regattas to do for low pressure events. Last race on the C3 start, the Learn to Race Fleet. Edson's too early. Oh, perfect. He did a little squirrel there. Clara Sweet, little squirrel. Little squirrely back and forth. Bam. Isn't that cool? So she should have stayed to windward. She's going to come out okay because Port Tack. She should have just gone on Port Tack. Yeah, she is. Port Tack is just fine. Oh, she should have just stayed on port. That's okay. Nice job, Winston and Hudson heading out. Hudson might be winning the day. Reagan, look at that. Oh, her main sheet is caught. Look at the red, the blue, the awesome boat, the white boat with the blue stern. Her main sheet's caught on the windward corner. <laughs> and look at her, she's just dialed in. She's fastest boat on the fleet right now. Now she should see those boats ahead getting luffing and she should start coming down now. She should actually start to come down a little. And then as she gets a little more power, those guys look back at her and then she points back up and it'll it totally will mess with them. It'll make them pinch, but she should be pressing as you, you gotta use other boats around you as your tiltos. Look at Winston, just patience king right there. He's just up a little, down a little, down a little, cruise. He just carried it through. Hudson got stuck there. Okay, the lesson we learned for 8315 is it's okay to go on port tack. You dip down below, you didn't make the line, and then you came around. You should have just went on port tack and just ducked to the sterns of one boat, maybe Reagan, maybe two. Anyhow, you're coming back. Anyway, last video. Thanks, everybody.